Do you ever take a test and think to yourself, this is going to be bad? Did you ever write an essay and think a chimpanzee could do better? Did you ever make a speech and pray to get back to your seat? I think it's because we've been denied the right to fail, to fall on our face, in front of our friends, and with meaningful feedback, try again. What other purpose can the classroom serve than as a place in which to make mistakes and try again? I learned that 20 years ago when I was teaching some of the brightest students I ever taught. We were learning about the American Revolution, making speeches about the basics, Battle of Trenton, Battle of Yorktown, and it was Mary's turn to speak. She's probably the smartest student I ever taught. And then she rose from her desk, she walked to the front of the room, and as she was about to speak, she froze. Mind-bending experience, it changed my life. How could Mary, brilliant, thoughtful, leaderly, articulate, poised, athletic, enviably so, how could she freeze from the front of the room? I was thrown, I said try again, and then she cried. I said, Mary, you have whatever opportunities you need, and as I turned to the class, it hit me. We all have whatever opportunities we need. If you feel stuck, we'll unstuck you. If you feel tongue-tied, we got your back. We're here for each other. <laughs> laughter exploded in the classroom like a laughter hand grenade. It reached Mary. It reached me. It was, think about it highly driven students, suddenly laughing. It was the uproarious sound of relief. We can make mistakes. We can try again. We can help each other. I think about the Navy SEALs. They are our elite special operations fighting force, arguably the most effective fighting force in history. And I wonder, how does a seal, this pinnacle of soldier, how does a seal make sure that the recruit is as tough as he is? And how do they keep that tradition going for decades? One thing that I find fascinating, so simple, is they give recruits three chances to pass an evolution. Why would the tough of the tough give you three chances? I think it's because the Navy SEAL sets such unusually high expectations that every recruit must have the experience of going beyond their perceived limits. In other words, they need the opportunity to learn from failure. So I have three thought experiments on failure. First, assign the final exam on the first day of school. The traditional final exam is one for which you study, but from which you learn nothing. It's taken once, you don't know why you got the grade, it's high stakes, it's stressful, and you're stuck with it. But put that final exam on the first day of school, and class will come to life. Because no one student can master the exam, collaboration becomes essential, failure becomes a frequent rite of passage, and high fives abound as students work together, retaking, and collaborating their way to mastery. Put that exam first. Students know exactly what they need to know. Put that exam first, you come up with a better test. Because students are retaking this exam over and over, they'll help you come up with better questions than the ones you came up with. And finally, this is not a small thing, put that exam first and you're reducing everyone's anxiety. Failure is no longer seen as a white padded room for the traumatized, failure seen as a mountain to climb, to inspire. Nerd note, I do require students to retake the exam alone, second round, and if they fail, I will sing them a song. I want you to know the information, all of it. Retake it, summarizing my approach in a sentence. When the bar is high and the stakes are low, Good things happen. 
Second thought experiment. It is not enough to know something. We have to use what we've learned to create something new. My epiphany was this. Use a course to help students see the world. Ultimately, I don't think we're teaching George Washington or the American Revolution. I think we're asking, what can George Washington teach us about the January 6th raid on the Capitol? What can he teach us about the war in the Ukraine? What can he teach us about responding to a global pandemic? What can he teach us about self-control in a social media age that's also riven with surveillance? What can he teach us about race? Those questions require students to have a deep level of content mastery and to use that information to understand the pressing concerns of our day and to engage in conversation where there's a diversity of points of view and where divergent thinking, out-of-the-box thinking is encouraged. When relevance drives the bus, we get on board because we want to answer, what are we doing and how can we do better? It's the lack of an answer. It's the urgency to learn. It's creating a space where we can experiment, make mistakes, and help each other grow in a feeling of community and joy. It also deepens the research and communication skills and a love for learning that transcends the course. It's also kept me inspired to teach for 25 years. Third thought experiment. When your students are brave enough to finally speak in front of class, have them do so at least twice. The first time together, second time alone. Just like the final exam, we need a high bar. Mine is two minute speech, no notes. Public speaking, I found, traumatizes precisely because it's taught without a cushion for failure. But set a high bar designed for students to fail, help each other, try again, and students discover their voice. And that's the problem Mary had. There was no cushion for failure. There was no support when she did. And so we create a place for failure. Now she would speak in the back of the classroom, sitting on a desk. We clear all the other desks away. We create a welcoming you around her. We might all just sit on the floor because two minutes to mastery is a workshop, an opportunity for us to listen and learn from each other, to make mistakes and grow, and that's what happens. As students make their speeches and give each other feedback to improve, they begin to construct an understanding of what content mastery sounds like. They begin to appreciate that organization is crucial, and they get it. They recognize how a unique point of view electrifies the room. I want you to imagine that you're celebrated for failing and trying again. Your neighbors, your family, your coworkers, your colleagues are all giving you high fives. I want you to imagine that you felt such love that it inspired eloquence. I want you to imagine that upon performing the most difficult task, finding a job, keeping it, finding love, keeping it, running for office, whatever the challenge may be, that you know you have more than one opportunity and that at least one person is cheering you on. If I could put two words on a sign, it would be try again. The strength to get back up is the lesson. And when we do it together, it's awesome. Thank you so much for your patience.